Welcome to the City Club of Cleveland, the City Citadel of Free Speech for 98 years and counting. My name is Harold Rousey. I'm a member of the City Club Special Programs Committee. Tinkering with the Ohio Constitution seems to be in vogue. Our state constitution has been amended more than a dozen times in about a decade. And there have been several unsuccessful attempts to amend the Constitution in this same time period. By contrast, the United States Constitution has been amended barely two dozen times in over two centuries. Jonathan Etten, professor of law and political science at Case Western Reserve University and one of my law teachers, argues that the constant tinkering has cluttered this organic uh, document with mundane matters. Stephen Steinglass, professor and dean emeritus at Cleveland Marshall College of Law at Cleveland State University, will explore Ohio's upcoming vote on calling a state constitutional convention. Is this a chance to cure what ails us, or do we risk opening Pandora's box? Each of our speakers will also offer his thoughts on the other's remarks, and hopefully address the question posed in the title of today's program, whether the recent amendments represent democracy at work or special interests at work. Then we will open the floor to the traditional city club question period. Two law professors answering questions instead of asking them. I, for one, look forward to seeing that. <laughs> professors, you have the floor. Okay. I'm, I'm going to begin. I'm Steve Steinglass. Um, the way we divided this up is I'm going to sprint through the first 108 years of Ohio constitutional history with an emphasis on how the Constitution changes. So constitutional revision is really the theme. And then that will sort of set up the rest of the program. Um, some basic information. Many of you know this, but perhaps not all. All amendments to the Ohio Constitution must be approved by the voters by a simple majority vote. And there are three ways to amend the Constitution. One, the General Assembly may propose amendments by a three-fifths vote of its members. The, secondly, a constitutional convention may propose amendments. A convention may be called by a two-thirds vote of each House of the General Assembly or on a mandatory vote presented to the people every 20 years. Ohio is one of 14 states that presents this mandatory referendum to the electorate and gives them a chance to vote for um, having a convention. The third way of amending the Constitution is through an initiative petition, which is a device we've had since the 1912 Constitutional Deve Convention, and we'll talk a little more about that later. Let me just step back now into history and say that Ohio has had three successful constitutional conventions. Each of them took place during a very pivotal year in Ohio history. The first convention, the Convention of 1802, paved the way for Ohio's admission as the 17th state in the United States, the first state carved out of the Northwest Territory. Influenced by a romantic belief in the sovereignty of the people and the notion that the legislature coming out of the people could do no wrong. The first constitutional convention reacting to the autocratic rule of Arthur St. Clair, the Federalist governor of the Northwest Territory, opted for a form of constitution that really embodied legislative supremacy. That first constitution was never submitted to the people for ratification. There was a governor, but he had little power, no veto power. Indeed, a Republican governor, a Whig governor, rather, in 1840 said that Ohio governors only had the power to appoint notaries and pardon Democrats. So that sort of suggests how little power the governor, the governor had. Most seriously, I think, the 1802 constitution was almost impervious to amendment. The only way to amend the 1802 Constitution was by the General Assembly, by a two-thirds vote, calling a convention, um, the people then voting on whether they would have a convention, and then the ensuing convention would take place. Well, in 1800, Ohio was a state consisting of, excuse me, 1800 was before Ohio, Ohio was a state. Um, in 1802, Ohio was a state of eight counties. In 1850, 88 counties. Beginning of the 19th century, Ohio had 43,000 people. 1850, it had 1.98 million. So we had a constitution for the first 50 years that really was not capable of growth or responding to circumstances. The 
50-51 constitutional convention proposed an entirely new constitution, a constitution that reduced the power of the General Assembly, still did not give the governor a veto power, made modest reforms in the operation of the judi judiciary, and most importantly for our purposes today, ended the legislative monopoly on constitutional revision in two ways. First, and perhaps most importantly, it s adopted the provision under which there would be a mandatory vote every 20 years on whether or not there would be a constitutional convention. And then secondly, the General Assembly um, gave itself, excuse me, the convention gave the General Assembly the authority to um, propose amendments itself. And that convention, the 1851 Constitution, was ratified by a vote relatively close, 10 to 15,000 votes. That is the Constitution that we still have today. Ohio operates on the seventh or eighth oldest Constitution in the country. Ohio has, I think, the third oldest Constitution outside New England. So it's an old Constitution. Fast forward. In 1912, Ohio had probably its most successful experience in constitutional revision, certainly its most successful modern experience. Um, the 1912 Constitutional Convention, which occurred at the height of the progressive movement on the eve of the founding of the City Club, was a very, very important national event. We'll talk more about that in a moment. What the 1912 Constitutional Convention did cleverly is it avoided the disastrous fate of the 1874 Constitution, which had been rejected by the people. Instead, what they did in 1912 is they recommended, the convention recommended, 42 discrete amendments so that if someone felt strongly against Amendment A or B or C, they would not be inclined to vote down the entire Constitution. And 34 of the 42 amendments were approved by the electorate, including, most significantly for today, the um, provision that authorized direct democracy. Um, direct democracy, including initiated constitutional amendments, initiated statutes, and a referendum procedure in which the voters could review statutes enacted by the General Assembly. What I, what I, what I'll, what I'm going to turn it over to Jonathan in, in a second, but what I want to say is that the, the debates, all 2,000 pages of which, which I haven't read, but what I have read from the 1912 Constitutional Convention is just a fascinating exercise in democracy. And the, the, the approach on the issue of the initiative and the referendum, direct democracy, is just very illuminating. The supporters approached it with a religious fervor. They were, they were doing God's earth, God's work on earth. The opponents thought it was socialism, come to the United States and come to Ohio. They, they feared the Henry Georgists, the single tax people who wanted to only impose a tax on real estate. Nonetheless, the um, initiative referendum were proposed by the Constitutional Convention. They were approved by the electorate. And as things happen, they were then used over the next 100 years. We'll save the statistics and the experience for later in the program. OK. Thanks, Steve. I want to jump forward and, and talk um, more about the recent past. In doing that, though, I think it's important that we understand that we're talking about a state constitution. And it, while Herc is right that the Ohio Constitution has been amended uh, a lot more recently than the federal constitution has been amended over, a, a, over a, a more extended period, we should recognize a basic difference between the federal constitution and a state constitution. The whole notion about the federal constitution was that sovereignty ultimately resided either in the people or in the states. The federal government was given only certain powers, 